cutlery. Together, we can eliminate this environmental concern. Please join me in the challenge for a plastic-free 2020. Live at 7, another group of Haitian immigrants Coming up in our news live at 7, another group of Haitian immigrants captured at sea as the crisis deepens inside Haiti. An American visitor clings to life in hospital in Nassau after his wife is killed in a boat crash in Exuma over the weekend. The head of the Public Services Union claiming a leadership challenge from the president of the Air Traffic Controllers Union. And then in our news at 7.30, the family of a murder victim claims he was an innocent bystander. Welcome to Our News Live at 7. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Marlena Leonard, in for Candino Knowles, who is off. The news out of Haiti remains bleak with a new round of violence claiming more lives. Meanwhile, the influx of migrants continues with even more reasons for Haitians to flee. Over the weekend, another 155 migrants were picked up at sea. Just last week, 264 Haitians were returned to cap by sea. National Security Minister Wayne Monroe speaking to the influx issue today. One of the problems facing our repatriation efforts is where to return them. With gangs controlling much of the capital of Port-au-Prince, it's difficult to land at the airport. As Monroe points out, where they land depends on the situation on the ground. There was a subsequent 
um, interdiction uh, right recently over the weekend. I think it's about another 150 who were taken to HMBS gunpoint. Um, they would have to be processed, and then the Department of Immigration will liaise with regard how and when they are to be repatriated. As the current security circumstance exists, um, although the U.S. has sent troops to secure the airport to evacuate their citizens, and there's no indication of how long that will be um, if C is the only option, and we will have a look at further repatriation by C if necessary. The question of cost also raised today. While he couldn't give exact numbers as he's waiting a full costing, the minister did outline some of the contributing cost factors. I will follow up on it. It has to do with fuel for the two vessels, and it's two vessels because of the security concern, the Lawrence Major where they will be housed, and a force protection vessel um, to escort her, and the food. Lawrence Major is on her way back to New Providence for replenishment of water and supplies um, to head back down into the southern theater of operations. I hope to have that for you shortly. While CARICOM and other regional neighbors work toward finding solutions to the ongoing crisis in Haiti, Bahamian authorities are on high alert as the tide of immigrants grows. The Defense Force is beefing up patrols of the southern borders as more and more boatloads of Haitians try to land. This weekend, our Joshua Williams got an exclusive look at the operations of one of the patrol boats in the southern Bahamas. So this is our family away from our home. And for the next few days, this would be the home for myself and cameraman Rashad Ferguson. The HMBS Bahamas is the pride and flagship of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force. It's home and workplace for one of the busiest board patrol units. Interesting fact, the vessel purchased before the turn of the century has been in service longer than I've been alive. Coxswain Chief Petty Officer Lamont Thurston has responsibility for the men and women on board. And when you do come on board, you're going to know that you're going to experience what we do, how we patrol, how we clean, how we interact with persons, and what we do. Hopefully, if we get a bus, you will be there and you will see exactly what, how the life of a seaman is. The 60-meter boat ironically holds up to 60 crew who are fully trained in onboard safety, communication, and respect for the chain of command. We get orders come from our bosses, and it comes down from here to our commanding officer. And when we do our drills and we have to teach our persons here, our Marines, what to do. If they don't understand it, we have to communicate them and order them to understand. We make sure we go through it, we run drills. So when we do do it, they could effectively do, do and carry out the task at hand. Petty Officer Jordan Sands is the bosun mate. He oversees deck duties and anchoring, all very serious business. Very important when we're moving, mooring from one place to the next, because uh, safety it is paramount. So it is paramount that each deck can know what to do. But for many of these Marines, the best part of the job is giving back. It's a good career. You can make a good career, and you know it's a lot of it's a lot of benefits. They have to pass the knowledge down. That's the third thing. We have to be professional in teaching in teaching these young people what it is the life to be a Marine in the Royal Bahamas Defense Force. Because this here is something that they could pass on generation to generation to the other coming up up and coming Marines. Later this week, learn more about the work of the Defense Force in patrolling the Southern Bahamas. Reporting for our news, I'm Joshua Williams. You can join us the entire week as we present a series of stories on the Defense Force, its work in the Southern Bahamas, as well as a slice of life in Inagua. Now, we have more tonight on that boating incident in Exuma on Sunday that killed a 55-year-old woman from Colorado and left her husband badly injured. The mishap happened around 11 a.m. Sunday off of Exuma's coast. The Colorado couple were said to be in a dinghy which collided with a larger intrepid vessel. The woman was pronounced dead shortly after. Her husband is fighting for his life tonight in hospital back here in the capital. His condition is listed as serious. Commissioner of Police Clayton Fernander giving this update on the Staniel Key incident. What we know at this time, uh, one uh, female has, has died. Uh, it appears as though there was a two-boat collision. That's a smaller boat and there was a larger boat. It appears as though uh, they did not see each other. 
the larger boat did not see the smaller vessel, the captains of, of those vessels, and the, the larger vessel would have run over the smaller vessel that resulted in the death of the, the female uh, uh, visitor. That matter is under active investigation. The commissioner could not give an official identification of the victim or her injured husband. He was also questioned about whether the other vessel was an excursion tour boat. I can't speak to that at this time, but that there are lines of inquiries that we are following. The other victim who was injured is here in Nassau as we speak and in, still in serious condition at this time. The head of the Public Services Union making some serious accusations against the head of the air traffic controllers. That story is coming up in a moment, but first, it's time for your first look at temperatures. Meteorologist Greg Thompson is standing by in the Weather Center. Greg? Yeah, thanks Marlene. Uh, nice to see you this evening. Beautiful conditions around the islands. Uh, we do have high pressure that is in charge and that's keeping us with rather nice, comfortable temperatures. It's 75 degrees right now outside our studios, partly cloudy. And it is still a bit breezy. It winds out of the east northeast at 30 miles per hour. It feels like temperature is a comfortable 76. Temperatures around the islands right now: 75 in Freeport, 74 over in Marsh Harbor, Abaco. We pick up 75 once again in Alice Town, Bimini, here in the capital and in Governors Harbor. Great Harbor Key, you guys are 77. Nickel Stan Andrews, 76 into the Central Bahamas, 75s. Kemp's Bay, Arthurstown, Cat Island, Cooper Town, St. Salvador, Georgetown, 76, 77 in Deadman's Key and into the Southeast Bahamas. 77s across the board, the exception being Providentialis, you guys are 79 and Matthew Town, Inaco, Deep South, you are 79 at this hour as well. Taking a look at our satellite and radar composite, quiet across area, once again as high pressure I said in charge. We do have some low-level moisture moving across areas, so we're seeing some patchy clouds as well as some very light showers, but that high pressure will remain in charge with our weather for the next couple of days. We do expect a front by Thursday, but not much weather is expected with that. That's your first look of weather. Stick with us. A look at your extended forecast is still to come. Still to come on our news, a man charged in court today with trying to have sex with girls seven and nine years old. Tensions rising between the leaders of the Public Services and Air Traffic Controllers Union. And time to show your support for Team Bahamas at Carifta Swimming. Find out what this local brand is doing to get us geared up. That's coming up when our news returns. technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fix and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions.
growth technology. A 26-year-old man is facing charges after authorities say he tried to have sex with two underage girls, aged 7 and 9. Ray Sebastian Charles was charged before Assistant Chief, Ma Chief Magistrate Carolyn Vo Evans on two counts of attempted unlawful sexual intercourse. He allegedly attempted to rape the 9-year-old on March 12th and the 7-year-old on March 18th. Bail was denied and Charles is due in court on June 6th for a voluntary bill of indictment. And tensions are brewing between the two leaders of the Bahamas Public Services Union and the air traffic controllers. BPSU President Kimsley Ferguson is accusing the Bahamas Air Traffic Controllers Union president of crossing union lines and interfering with BPSU business. Our news obtained an email thread where Air Traffic Controllers Union President Hinzi McKenzie is demanding matters be addressed that have come to his attention by members of the airport authority. He is threatening to call the Prime Minister to address the matter. Ferguson took the issue with the matter as the Bahamas Public Services Union is the sole bargaining unit for airport authority workers. Ferguson believes it's an attempt to overthrow his leadership. I do believe that the, 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 the Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas is an attorney and he understands what sole bargaining agent means. And so for persons to be using the Prime Minister's name very loosely and threatening management with it is a serious concern for us. And we're hopeful that upon his return that he would address the same. It's an attempt to do so, but we are steadfastly looking at moving ahead. And we're not focused on those persons who are out there trying to create distractions. Our news reached out to Air Traffic Controllers Union President Hinzi McKenzie. He says, as a unionist, he's within his rights to represent workers, not union members. One of the issues identified was a pension plan. The BPSU head says airport authority workers already have a contributory pension plan. To claims of a new union being formed, McKenzie says he has no knowledge of the claim. He admits he had no conversations with Ferguson, but revealed airport authority workers want to be moved to his union. However, he says he has no interest in that. That's not a problem for me as a unionist to do. If BPS will deal with the issues and start complaining and go and speak to the airport authority and deal with those matters and work on behalf of its members, it wouldn't be the situation. I've never met with the airport authority on no matters. When our news comes back from the break, we turn our spotlight to stories making headlines across the world as charred bodies in the streets of Haiti mark a new round of violence. Plus, a New York judge rules against Trump's attempts to delay his hush money trial. Boeing CEO steps down amid ongoing safety issues with the aircraft maker's designs. We have the details when our news returns. technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiencies. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions.
This is Our News. Welcome back. We turn our attention now to stories making headlines across the world. We begin in Haiti, where charred bodies have been recovered from Port-au-Prince's streets after a gang leader was killed in a police operation. Haiti has been gripped by violence since rival gangs unleashed a wave of attacks this month. International organizations say almost half the country is struggling to feed themselves. Trevor Coral reports. Gravediggers buried charred bodies allegedly belonging to gang members in Haiti after clashes between the national police and armed groups left the prominent gang leader dead. Authorities were seen recovering the charred bodies from the street in Port-au-Prince on Friday. The remains were said to be members of the Delmas 95 gang led by Ernst Julme, also known as T. Greg. It was not clear if one of the charred bodies was Julme, who died in the shootout with police. The death of Jill May, who's associated with crime boss Jimmy Barbecue Cherizier's alliance, marks a setback for the gangs and their effort to take over more of the city. Jill May had recently escaped from Haiti's largest prison in a mass jailbreak. Haiti has been gripped by violence since rival gangs unleashed a wave of attacks this month. Thousands have been killed and hundreds of thousands displaced. International organizations, including the World Food Program, said almost half of Haiti's people are struggling to feed themselves, with the country now suffering its worst level of food insecurity on record. Regional leaders are trying to form a transitional council that would be tasked with appointing a replacement for Prime Minister Ariel Henry, who announced his resignation on March 11th. He is currently stranded abroad as gang violence prevented his return to the country. The New York judge overseeing the criminal case against former President Donald Trump rejected his bid to delay the trial over a new batch of documents. This trial stems from a hush money payment made to an adult film star. Judge Juan Merchan convened an, a hearing on Monday to hear arguments. Following his ruling, the trial will get underway on April 15th. The start date all but ensures that Trump will become the first ever former U.S. president to go on trial for criminal charges. It also paves the way for Trump to either be convicted or cleared before the November 5th election. And Boeing CEO Dave Calhoun will step down by year's end. It's part of a broad management shakeup brought on by the plane maker's sprawling safety crisis, stemming from a January mid-air panel blowout involving an Alaska Airlines-operated MAX 9 jet carrying 171 passengers. After a Senate hearing in late January, Calhoun told reporters Boeing was confident in its products. You don't have any assurance for customers who are too scared to fly on a Boeing plane? We believe in our airplanes. We feel that safe airplanes. Our people do. We have confidence in the safety of our airplanes. And that's what all of this is about. And we fully understand the gravity. Still to come on our news today in history. Find out interesting facts about the day that was March 25th. And then in our news at 7.30, the family of a weekend murder victim says he was an innocent bystander. It's Holy Week. Starting tonight, we begin our series on millennial pastors, clergymen under 40, trying to bring the word of God in a complex modern society. That's coming up later when our news at 7.30 comes your way. and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. 
with proper tools like our fixed and mobile services. We help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. Welcome back to our news. On this day in Bahamian history, the 25th of March, 1807, the British Parliament passed the abolition of the Slave Trade Act, banning trafficking of African people. Some of those freed from offending ships would go on to become the settlers of the liberated African settlements such as Carmichael, Gambier, Adelaide, and Fox Hill. You can find more on that and the other historical Bahamian events of March 25th on ournews.bs. And the countdown is on to this year's Carifta Swimming Championships with the Bahamas as the host country. Fans are looking for the Bahamian team to bring home the win for the sixth consecutive year. One local vendor is looking to build momentum with the commemorative tees for Team Bahamas. Our Danielle Miller gets us suited up. It is a partnership you may have not seen coming, but once introduced, you can agree it was needed. The local organizing committee for Rifta Aquatics 2024 and I as a Bahamian Bay have officially collaborated for the upcoming Carifta Aquatic Games. Its owner, Cache Knowles, tells us what this partnership means to her. So Team Bahamas reached out to me about the collaboration, about doing a shirt for, you know, the upcoming games, and it really aligned with, one, the values um, of Eyes of Bahamian Bay. I like to support um, payments, athletes, and I did a video to do with uh, the Carifta Games, Aquatics Games, last year, um, highlighting, like, the accomplishments and also the history of the game. So that was really you know, just perfect alignment. Media chairperson for Carifta Aquatics 2024 Championship, Randia Coakley, co-signs, saying it's the perfect pairing. She tells me when it came to selecting a company to provide the shirts, they wanted something fun, authentic, and trendy. Our target audience of the swimmers and our parents and our aunts and uncles and every family member are familiar with this beautiful social media social media platform that connects Bahamian culture and we want a team Bahamas culture to be able to be amplified. Now that the deal is done and Carifta is just days away, Cache says, I feel pressure now even thinking about, you know, what people are gonna react to the shirt. Um, it takes on my signature style of like definition and being very fun and like quirky so I you know the pressure at all is the people can like it or not. These wonderful shirts are now on sale at BahamasAquatics.com. You can pre-sale they're only $30 and they're available for the entire public. All the proceeds goes towards Team Bahamas. Reporting for our news I'm Danielle Miller. Thanks, Danielle. To watch that story again and for all of today's top stories, visit ournews.bs. Well, that does it for our news at 7. Joining us now with the latest is our Italia Hall with the latest headlines. Italia. Hey, thanks so much, Marlena. Happy Monday. <laughs> Happy the Monday. The start of a new week. We got until Friday, but at least we have a short work week because we have Easter coming up. So it's Good Friday and then we have Easter Monday. <laughs> you have your hot sauce buns. I you? ordered them and I expect them to be delivered on Thursday. So I'm looking forward to my hot cross buns, fish, as well as my macaroni. Yeah, long as it's there. <laughs> right. Thanks so much, Marlena. Well, the heartbroken friend of the country's latest murder victim recalls the moment a young father was gunned down at his auto body repair shop. Plus, a Grand Bahama man dies a week after a violent traffic accident. And our Bertie McDermott sits down with the young pastor to discuss keeping the faith during Holy Week. Carry your latest headlines. First tonight on our news live at 7.30, the country's murder count increasing to 34. Tonight, our Bertie McDermott speaks exclusively with a friend of the victim. The, your death, to, your life to be taken on your daughter's birthday. 
that's not something a child would always remember, you know, my dad died on my birthday. Also, a 58-year-old man has lost his life following a traffic accident in Grand Bahama. We have video of the frightening ordeal. And later, crime concerns on the island of Eleuthero. The police commissioner speaks and making it big in the city of Miami Gardens. We hear the candid story of a Bahamian man whose business has grown by leaps and bounds. The story, when our news live at 7.30, continues. Medical care? Do you need affordable medical supplies? Ports International is the largest home health care supplier. Medical supplies at the very best price. And you can even shop online. From hospital beds to wound care, wheelchairs to walkers, Ports is a one-stop shop for your medical supplies and we accept insurance. We have online shopping and two locations to serve you at the Airport Industrial Park and Shirley Street. We also ship to the Family Islands. Shop online and visit us on Facebook. Call Ports at 377-1771. Bahamas Power and Light Company Limited looks forward to helping our customers eliminate wasted energy. Energy conservation is the decision and practice of using less energy. Energy efficiency means using less energy to perform the same task, unplugging appliances not in use. That's energy conservation. Replacing an old refrigerator, washing machine with a new model, adding insulation to the attic and walls of a home. That's energy efficiency. People can serve to gain more control over their energy bill and to reduce demand on the Earth's natural resources. Take this journey with us as we build for better. BPL. I'm Michaela Kerr. I'm an 18-year-old freshman at the University of the Bahamas, and I'm a computer science major. I'm also the NT Corporation's Youth Ambassador for the Environment, and I'm an environmentalist. My journey as the environmental advocate began with a simple yet profound realization that our environment is degrading right in front of my eyes. And being NT's Youth Ambassador for the Environment means that my words and my actions hold the power to help change the environment and the world around me. I find it exciting that I can be a student, live my life, and use my words and my voice to change the environment and world around me. Most times I think it's a privilege, it's our environment, and it's our generation to own. I don't think as a young person that there's anything more rewarding. Welcome to our news. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Natalia Hall. A brazen a daylight double shooting on Sunday claiming the life of a 33-year-old man. The deadly incident pushing the country's murder count to 34. Tonight we hear from a close family friend who's grappling with the law saying he was an innocent bystander who got caught in the crossfire. Bertie McDermott reports. When I got the news, it felt like somebody just take a brick and push it down my throat because I couldn't breathe. A close friend of auto body mechanic Paul Cox Jr., who was shot and killed on Sunday morning, is speaking out. Cox was shot shortly after 11 a.m. at his body shop on Winder's Terrace of Malcolm Road. He died a short time later at the hospital. Wanting to remain anonymous to protect herself, this woman says she's a family friend. She describes Cox as a hardworking and kind person who didn't bother anyone. Paul ain't no master person. He ain't no, no, none of them bad guys who would go out there and, and, and be doing a bunch of wicked stuff. He goes to work. From work, he's back home. He don't even party. She says it was her son's car Cox was working on when the gunfire erupted. My son called me and said, Mommy, Paul dead, because he was actually working on my son's car. Um, and he was water sand in the car. He was water sand in the car. And actually, when he got killed, because Saturday, you know, we had a lot of rain, and he couldn't work on the car then. So he um, said, and he don't work on Sundays. He don't work on Sundays. According to friends, Cox, who has a daughter, moved from Jamaica to the Bahamas more than 10 years ago, leaving behind his entire family to open up his body shop. His daughter's birthday, I think, was yesterday also. So to die on your, uh, you mean for you, to, your, to, your death, to, your life to be taken on your daughter's birthday? His friend says from what she knows, Cox was caught in the crossfire and another man was the intended target. When the, the gunman came, they must be, the person who they came for was in the area, but that person saw the persons who came to get him and he hopped the fence. 
he, he jumped the fence and he, he got away. But Paul was there and they was just shooting. So Paul got, um, I think they said, five shots in his chest. She had this message to the killers. The only thing I can say to the perpetrators is God is not asleep. He is alive and he knows exactly what happened. And I just pray that they be caught by the police. Reporting for Our News, I'm Bertha McDermott. Well, some sad news to report tonight. As a Grand Bahamian man that was hospitalized following a serious traffic accident on March 18th has died from his injuries. You may remember a week ago, this video shown here went viral. The video shows a bus driver crushed under a 1998 Toyota Hiace bus on Queens Highway. The bus also had two passengers on board. Police say the incident also involved a 2011 Ford Fusion. That car was driven by a 26-year-old man who allegedly veered into the path of the bus, causing the two vehicles to collide. Residents say the victim is 58-year-old Jonathan Cow Jones, a well-known bus driver. While Commissioner of Police Clayton Fernandez is weighing in on whether there's a need for more officers in Eleuthera, this after the family island has seen two murders in under a month. The first murder took place on February 26 when a young man was shot to death in a Harbor Island nightclub. The second just weeks later on March 21st when a 25-year-old died after allegedly being stabbed by his 15-year-old brother, Fernandez telling the media this morning. When we look at and, and view the, the manpower audit there, yes, there's a need for more officers, but I don't think it's at that level uh, uh, that they cannot control that. The first murder, we know what happened there. The video footage speaks for itself, and that individual is behind bars. Uh, the second murder that occurred, two youngsters, man, it's so sad. Uh, two brothers, uh, altercation in the home, and one stabbed the other. And that matter has since uh, been closed. He says her focus on the island at this time is outreach, working to build a sense of community and encouraging peaceful conflict resolution tactics. We continue to be proactive in the community, doing a lot of town uh, meetings, just to bring the community together and trying to solve conflicts, to educate uh, uh, the, the community there as to how to solve conflict. That is our problem, uh, what is going on up there. We'll continue to do it. We have to continue, but we ask in members of the public and people within the community. And it's a village, man. It's a village. It takes a village to raise a child. And we have to go back to that, and we have to continue to do just that uh, to try to save our young people. All right, well, the work week has gotten off to a good start as we are experiencing some nice weather conditions. Meteorologist Greg Thompson is live in the Weather Center with your first look at weather. Greg, yeah, quite are. a shift <laughs> we with what we experienced yeah, on the weekend, right but you did warn us. Yep, uh, it was on point, and uh, thanks to the folks there at the Department of Meteorology, they actually got this one really on, on target with the rainfall. I did have five inches of rain in my yard, backyard. I have a rain gauge there, so we had quite a bit of rain. Uh, some people loved it. I know my mother loved it. She was out in the yard just this morning replanting some plants, so yeah. 74 degrees, much improved conditions, partly cloudy and it's breezy. Your winds out of the east at 13 miles per hour. Your feels like temperature is a comfortable 76. Satellite and radar composite showing much quieter conditions across the area. High pressure is in charge at highest building from the north towards the south. There is a weak frontal boundary well down to the south and east away from us. Low pressure system in the Gulf, uh, sorry, in the Atlantic Ocean is producing some hazardous beaching and boating conditions. So we're asking you boaters and you beachgoers to exercise extreme caution. There's some large swells that are going to be affecting our islands for the next couple of days. So it's going to be very rough out there. That's your first quick check on conditions around the island. Stick with us to look at your extended forecast still to come. Still to come on our news, tackle the issue. Leader of the Free National Movement, Michael Pintard, calling on the powers that be to demolish dilapidated buildings in Grand Bahama. Also, have you ever wondered what it takes to be the leader of the church? Our Bertany McDermott speaks with Bishop Denzel Rule about his journey. And later, making it big, we hear the candid story of a Bahamian man whose business has grown tremendously in the city of Miami Gardens. And that's all coming up when our news returns.
embrace technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiencies. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. Embrace technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business... There's been some concern about dilapidated buildings and derelict vehicles in Grand Bahama for decades. Leader of the Free National Movement and Member of Parliament for Marco City, Michael Pintard, recently addressed the situation as he called on the powers that be to tackle the issue of battered buildings in the city of Freeport. He says these buildings attract criminals and can possibly create health challenges in the community. They also affect value of the property, which could um, retard the uh, further development of the community because persons want to invest in and build in a community that they feel uh, is safe, is clean, is aesthetically beautiful, etc. So there are uh, multiple reasons why we must move with a sense of urgency in terms of removing uh, the de uh, dilapidated buildings. In cases where the structures are still sound, there are persons, including us, who are in charge of the constituency that would be willing to purchase the building and convert the building into a craft center, a place where you can have processing of, uh, of food or, or drinks. Um, but unfortunately, sometimes it's difficult to determine who owns the building. And Pintard says there's a need for more collaboration. We encourage residents to properly dispose of their vehicles, but we certainly could benefit from both the port and central government in the removal of, of derelict vehicles. We have, uh, we have moved dozens and dozens and dozens of cars over time and we'll continue to do so. Uh, but certainly um, it would be wonderful if there's a collaborative effort. Well, we see them on the pulpits preaching every Sunday, but the road isn't always easy. This week, our Bertie McDermott will speak to millennial pastors about the challenges and successes of leadership. Tonight, we begin with Bishop Denzel Roll. Bishop Denzel Roll wears many hats. The senior pastor is also a gospel artist, husband, father, brother, and entrepreneur. The list doesn't end there, though. He's also the general superintendent of the Highway Church of God. He's been pastoring Life Worship Center for 14 years. He says the demographic consists mostly of people 50 and under with very few members over 60. We asked him if it's sometimes challenging bridging the gap between older and younger congregants. And so what you're finding is that the senior saints, the senior members, they want to be where the 30 and the 40 year olds are. Over the years, the church suffered heavy criticism over its failure to evolve in some instances or the lack thereof. On the other hand, many churches globally have been accused of being too progressive and straying away from godly principles. The key to what we do is the principles of the word of God. And the principles can never, ever become anachronistic. They can never become irrelevant. On a more personal note, Roll is an engineer by profession, in addition to being a full-time pastor. With so much on his plate, Roll says the trick to finding the right balance is to always keep God at the center. I don't put God first. When you put God first, you get into problems. Because you could tend to forget him when you get to number 8 and number 15 or number 37. So I stop putting him first and I start putting him center. 
and allow everything to evolve around him. He had this to say to new pastors trying to find their way forward. There are a lot of persons who who are um, get, get caught up in this whole idea, I won't be the next Miles Monroe, or I won't be the next Bishop Neil Ellis, or I won't be the next. No, no, run the race that is set before you. I won't be the first Denzel Rose. Reporting for our news, I'm Bertany McDermott. It's now time for tonight's Financial Market Minute, brought to you by RF, your local investment bank. This has been your Financial Market Minute. To explore the best performing mutual funds in the Bahamas, visit our website at www.rfgroup.com. When our news comes back from the break, we hear the candid story of a Bahamian businessman that's making it big in the city of Miami Gardens. Coming up in sports, an update from the NCAA tournament and another dominant offseason for John Quill Jones. Plus warm weather to start off the work week. Greg is back with your extended weather forecast when our news continues. Stay with us. and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fix and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fix and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. Are you or a loved one under medical care? Do you need affordable medical supplies? Port this is our news. Welcome back. We get an update from the NCAA Women's Tournament and another high honor for Bahamian basketball icon John Paul Jones. Here now with our sports presented by 10th year seniors is Ronaldo Dorset. Ronaldo? 
Thanks, Italia, and welcome to Our Sports, presented by 10th Year Seniors. I'm Ronaldo Dorset. Let's do show. A round one win for Coach Yo set up a matchup where the Rebels went from the favorites to underdogs. It was a disappointing end to the season for the Rebels, eliminated this afternoon with a 71-56 loss to Notre Dame in the Albany 1 region of the NCAA tournament. The Fighting Irish got out to a 21-9 lead at the end of the first and the Rebels were unable to recover. Ole Miss made their third consecutive NCAA tournament under Coach Yo's six-year tenure and earned number seven seed for the second consecutive time. Ole Miss finishes the season 24-9 and set a new program best with 12 wins in SEC play to finish third in the conference. Four years ago, we were over and 16 and uh, now we've put ourselves in a situation to expect to go to at least a sweet 16 every year and so really disappointed as far as that's concerned but not disappointed with the team and what we've accomplished this season. All eyes may be focused on the madness in the NCAA, but Valentino Simon and Hutchinson College continue to progress in the Division I JUCO bracket. The Blue Dragons defeated USC Salk 96-82 today in the opening round hosted in Hutchinson, Kansas. Simon finished with nine points and four rebounds on the afternoon. The 11 seeded Blue Dragons will go on to face number six Chipotle College Tuesday night at 8.15. About a month ago, Jonquil Jones made headlines when she announced her free agency decision to return to the New York Liberty. Her preparation for another trip to the WNBA Finals begins in the offseason with her time in the Women's Chinese Basketball Association. The former WNBA MVP was named International Player of the Year for Inner Mongolia of the WCBA. An all-star selection, Jones averaged 23.5 points, 12.3 rebounds, and 3.8 assists per game. Inner Mongolia opens the playoffs in the quarterfinals against Shandong on March 26. A six-year pro, Jones has also played professionally in South Korea, Turkey, and Russia. Bahamas Baseball Association executive said the recent performance of the under-15 team is just the first step in getting the Bahamas back to the global stage. The president of the Americas, which is, covers all of the um, baseball countries in this region, said to us, teams that are ranked very low should not be, or usually are not, on a qualifier. Okay? So the expectation was the 59th ranked team in the world was not going to win any games, was not going to perform, and we shocked the world. Team Bahamas headed into the Pan Am World Cup qualifier ranked number 59, but emerged with wins over number 10 Panama and number 31 Argentina. It's a lot different than going out to Freedom Farm or JVLN or Mark T or I Elite. When you put in a Bahamian jersey across your, across your chest, it means, it means a lot. Um, and it gives you something much more to play for. That'll do it for our sports presented by 10th Year Seniors. I'm Ronaldo Dorset. Back to the studio. Still ahead on our news tonight, we hear the candid story of a Bahamian man whose business has grown over the years. Hear how they've shifted their focus on giving back. And fairly warm temperatures on this Monday. Greg is back with your weather details right after this quick break. technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fixed and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions.
embrace technology and the digital transformation for better business results. For small business owners, it's essential to understand how technology can affect operational efficiency. Modern communication relies on technology and your customer service depends on communication. With proper tools like our fix and mobile services, we help you stay connected. For solutions that work, ask the experts. Call Cable Bahamas Business Solutions. Are you or a loved one under medical care? Do you need affordable medical supplies? Ports International is the largest home health care supplier. Medical supplies at the very best price. And you can even shop online. From hospital beds to wound care, wheelchairs to walkers, Ports is a one-stop shop for your medical supplies and we accept insurance. We have online shopping and two locations to serve you at the Airport Industrial Park and Shirley Street. We also ship to the Family Islands. Shop online and visit us on Facebook. Call Ports at 377-1771. Welcome back to our news. We've had nice weather conditions on this Monday compared to what we experienced over the weekend. Greg is back in the Weather Center with your extended forecast. Greg. Yeah, thanks again, Natalia. Welcome back, everybody. Yeah, we got a good soaking on the weekend. Uh, as promised, a lot of rainfall. We had quite a bit, and those rainfall targets were on point, four to six inches expected. And, of course, we had some isolated higher amounts, but much improved conditions now as a that system is well out there in the open Atlantic. High pressure is building across us from the north. That's going to continue to generate some rather nice conditions. But that low pressure system will keep waves, seas rough. So we're asking you boaters and you beachgoers, especially in the Atlantic exposures, to exercise extreme caution. We're actually advising boaters from uh, getting into the Atlantic waters. Another system setting up shop across the central portions of the United States. Tail end of this front will get in our area sometime by Thursday, so that could bring us a couple of isolated showers by that time frame. Taking a look at our future forecast, once again, quiet conditions, high pressure and charge, mostly dry and our sunny skies. And here comes that front Tuesday evening. We expect that to slide into the eastern Gulf, west, eastern Gulf of Mexico by Wednesday evening and by Thursday, we expect that front to get across us and once again bring us some nice showers by that time. Boating forecast, Northwest and Central Islands, small craft advisory, caution flag inside the islands, but the advisory along the Atlantic waters. East to southeast winds, 15 knots. They will fall off 10 to 15 tomorrow. Seas, 3 to 5 feet. But they will be building up to 9 feet along Atlantic exposures. High tide will be at 9.07 tonight. The low tide taking place at 3.24 in the morning. For the southeast bombers, like simple as uh, we have the same caution advisory posted actually for the Atlantic waters. Northeast to east winds though at 10 to 15 knots. Seas 2 to 4 feet building up to 9 feet along Atlantic exposures. Here's a look now at your national forecast. In the extended forecast, beautiful weather expected for the balance of the week. That front getting in here sometime on Thursday, so we could see a couple of isolated showers. But this holy week, it's going to be nice. Easter Sunday, sunny and pleasant. Temperatures will be rather comfortable into the upper 70s. That's a look at our weather. Make it a great night and have a safe morning tomorrow, everybody. All right, thanks, Reg. Looks great. We now take you to the city of Miami Gardens, where a Bahamian-owned business has made a big name for itself. I spoke exclusively with the owner of the decades-old company who's sharing his candid story. Let's take a look. We started the business like 20 years ago. It's Charm One Shipping. We ship items to the Bahamas, Nassau, Freeport, any, anywhere in the Bahamas. Charm One's export was birthed by Rolissa Ambrose some 30 years ago. The idea back then was fresh and new to the Bahamas and the city of Miami Gardens, but owner Frankie Ambrose admits with courier services becoming more and more popular, business is a bit challenging. But we, we make it. Through God, we make it. The family-owned business focus has now shifted, and they do a lot of charity work in the city of Miami Gardens and the Bahamas. We do at least six events a year. We um, get we gather clothes and shoes and whatever else is needed to to our foundation. We do a big uh, foundation on for the Christmas. It's called Strong Corner Day. It's our biggest event, and we we do that on East Street over the hill. We, where we were actually from and where Charm Ones is located. He shares why they need to give back. Growing up in the Bahamas, it was really tough. We were basically with nothing except love. 
and the love we have now that we can afford to give back and you know basically go go back where we came from because we know there are other kids that's that's feeling it that's going through it and we want to make a change ambrose says their business proves that the bahamian culture is strong as it stands out in the city of miami gardens to know that you're from a little small island and you can come in this big country and make a difference and put the 242 logo up high that that makes that's a wonderful feeling it's such an inspirational story, of course, to see that story again. It's available now at ournews.bs. And with that, we thank you for joining us for our news tonight on behalf of the entire team. I'm Natalia Hall. We'll see you tomorrow night. Have a great evening.